the other day I did this video and showed how I made these test tubes and I figured well we shouldn't probably be denying, denying the laws of gravity and have them just floating around here might as well make a stand for them all right so that's what I'm going to do in this video make a quick test tube stand and then maybe we'll wrap up this laboratory glassware little series I've been doing so over here in an older version of blender I will have to update sometime soon uh, I think I'm just going to delete the default cube. I'm in Cycles Render, my GPU compute on my screencast keys. I think I'm going to take the camera though and the lamp and move them to another layer, just like that. I'm going to hit 1 and 5 and go into front view, and I'm going to bring in that test tube from another file, so I'm going to append. So I'm going to hit File, come down to Append, and then I just have to navigate and find the file that I want to get the model from and I believe it was called test tube video and then it'll open up this directory and I want object and the object that I want is I want the test tube and yeah I guess I gotta do it one at a time pen from okay so there's the test tube and I'm going to append and I want the stopper and maybe I'll take the liquid as well okay and when we'll have we'll have that stuff Okay, now um, that should bring in the materials, I believe. Yeah, I'll already have the materials, so we won't have to remake those. Anyhow, that is pretty, pretty big, so I'm going to take it and in object mode, I'm just going to scale like that. It doesn't have to be on the ground or anything. But let's say that would be my, my test tube. So I can just build to that sort of scale. Okay, so the way I'm going to build uh, the stand is this. I'm going to go into top view and I'm going to um, bring in a plane. I just want to get a sense of, yeah, okay, that's probably going to be an okay size. So I'm going to select the, the, the test tube and everything and I'm going to move this to another layer. And then back here on my first layer, Shift A, I'm going to bring in a plane. I'm going to go into edit mode and I'm going to subdivide this W, subdivide, W, subdivide. So I'm doing it twice. I could have selected twice there, but okay. In face selection, I'm going to select these four interfaces and then I'm going to I to inset. By the way, there's a heat wave here and a thunderstorm coming and I just heard some thunder. I'm hoping my power is not going to go out. Um, all right, so I'm going to do that. So I'm going to inset like that make a little square and I'm going to convert this to a circle using loop tools which I imagine is probably already installed uh, in yours otherwise I think you have to go to file user preferences add-on and search for it and loop tools has a selection called circle so I just converted that to a circle I might scale that in a small amount like that okay cool now the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to select these edges on the side Make sure I'm in median point and I'm going to go SX, scale in the X, I'm going to pull them in. I am going to be arraying this and I want the holes that will be there closer together than if this was like that. Okay, if I just array this, the holes are going to be there, and then the one there and there. I want them close, so SX, you'll see what I mean in just a minute. So I'm going to do that and I'm going to go back into object mode and I'm going to come over here, the wrench, add modifier, array in the X. I'm going to do it six times. Okay, I'm going to, I want six holes for this. I'm also going to click merge and apply. All right, so this is what I've got. All right, and as you can see, the circles are you know closer together. Um, I'm also going to shift alt and click that end and this end, and I want more room on either side now that I've arrayed them. So SX, and I'm going to pull out. And the reason I'm doing that is because um, when I punch holes in this and the test tube goes in, the, the stand, the posts of the stand that hold this part up will be there. Okay. All right. Now that's great. Now let's do this though. Let's do uh, origin of geometry first of all. Let's do origin of 3D cursor and geometry to 3D cursor. Just pop it right back in, in the middle there. Okay. All right. Cool. I'm going to shift D. I want to copy this and just bring it up. One of these is going to have holes in it. One of these is going to have indentation. So let's do the holes first back into edit mode and I'm going to go into face selection and look down on it hit C for paint select and it's going to click right in there and I'm going to get all of them just like that hit escape to get out of that and X faces delete the faces 
All right, now I'm gonna select it all and I'm gonna hit E to extrude and I'm gonna pull it up. And there's the fender and get the approximate thickness that I want for this thing, just like that. All right, great. Let's save that. Okay, now we're going to add a subdivision surface. I'll go for two, I'll hit smooth, and we can start to see how this is uh, turning out. Let's put an edge loop here, right down near the end, and one over here near the end. Okay, and because of the humidity, my mouse is sticking on the mouse pad a little bit, making it a little bit harder to, for me to move around. We'll get by, I hope. Okay, so we got that going on. And let's do something about these holes to make them a little sharper. I'm going to turn off the subdivision surface, a little easier to see. Control R here, roll my mouse wheel up one so I get two edges. And uh, accept and scale in the Z and just bring it up to near the top. All right, and, and uh, I'm going to do that again here. Roll my mouse up, I get two SZ. I don't even have to deselect, just Control R. Uh, oh. Let's do that again. Control R, roll up, then accept. Do that for all of the holes. That's my mouse. Cool. All right, so let's do that. Let's reapply that. And we can see that we've got the top part, nice holes, nice subdivision surface. Okay, cool. So let's go ahead and hide that and let's uh, work on this. All right. This part is going to have indentation. So the test tube goes through the hole and then just rests in a little groove there. So let's take this, I need to extrude and bring it up a little bit. And I want to do some more work on this, but let's do the indentations first. So let's paints like these let's see okay and for this one I'm gonna hit E to extrude and I'll just pull it down just a little bit we'll try that um, now if you want to have a look at this with subdivision surface we could we could show you that okay so a little bit of an indentation um, it's debatable if I would want to maybe let's see if I can select these all oops change the size um, just a thought, I might want to scale them in. Um, if I just do this and I go S, they're going to come together. So this is a good opportunity to switch over to individual origins that will treat each space on its own. And then I can go S and it'll do that. Let's see if that looks any better. Yeah, you know what, it's fine with me like that. Okay, so let's go back into edit mode. And I want to, um, I want to put an edge loop right here okay and then I want to select all these faces down here and I want to scale in the X and pull them out like that and scale in the Y and pull out like that and then I'm going to come in and I'm going to put another edge loop down there doing that and another edge loop down here doing this and then another edge loop up there. And slide it down to that end like that. And do the same on the other side. Okay, my dogs are getting a little uptight about the coming storm. Let's click on smooth and let's do one across the sides or lengthwise or whatever. Like that. Like that. Well, all really easy stuff to do. Cool. Let's save that and let's switch over to a different shading. Let's put on matte cap ambient occlusion and the one that I usually use. Just make it a little bit easier to see for the more pleasant view. Okay, so now here's what we have. Alt H to bring that back. Okay, we have that. Let's now bring in the test tube and have a look at that. So let's select everything there, A to select and do that and let's bring it down into place and then I will have to actually make it bigger I can see all right so I don't mind scaling this in object mode um, I might just want it why well we'll try let's try a global scale and see how that goes and that would just touch down there <clears throat> 
Um, the holes are relatively large compared to the test tube usually. Um, but let's go ahead and uh, select that all again. And maybe we'll try just uh, scale shift Z and just make it a bit fatter. Might want to do something about this stopper. I'm not crazy about it being that far down. Let's try that and then we'll see later on if it looks uh, uh, like it's you know, going down into the neck far enough. Okay, now here's the thing though. There's also little posts, so when you take the test tube out and you can lay it upside down, okay, with its mouth onto the, the, the rack or the stand. So I need to extend this piece forward a bit, and I'll show you what I mean in a second. So I'm going to hide this, but I've got the test tube there as a, as a bit of a reference. And I've got the holes there as well, I guess. I'm going to go into edit mode and wireframe. And I'm going to go into vertex and I'm going to box select all of these and I'm just going to pull them and think about this. I'm going to have a look at that. Let's go back in a solid view like that. Alt H. Um, okay, so I would put some posts there. That might not even be quite enough, but let's just go ahead. My 3D cursor is right in the center here, so I'm just going to go Shift A and I'm going to bring in a cylinder. I think I'll leave it at 32. Um, but let's not put any ends on it uh, right now and uh, go into edit mode and let's actually let's move it out first let's just move it out here um, let's go into edit mode and let's just uh, scale shift Z like that and let's position this um, pretty much in the center like that and then we can think about more stuff Okay, so that'll be into there. And um, I might actually want this a bit higher for the test tube, so that is about three quarters of the height up. And this I will have a little bit further down. Uh, edge selection, I want to select this upper edge and pull it down like that. Let's start closing this thing off. Let's center up on that. E to extrude, S to scale, pull it in. Uh, leave yourself enough room to do a bevel here on this edge. E and S and E and Alt M merge and center. All right, let's shift Alt and click that edge and Control B, pull back, give yourself a nice big space and roll your mouse up to get a nice bevel and smooth. And I'm not going to put a subdivision surface on it, but I think I do want it a little thinner. So, you know, I don't mind doing this in object mode. Scale Shift Z now. Just make sure that it looks like it's touching the ground and look at the height. I'll do a test in a minute. Uh, in fact, I think I'll do a test right now. I'm just going to copy this and bring it over here and I'm going to rotate X 180 and see, you can't really see through it or anything, but that would be the idea. All right. Now, um, I do have enough room that I can move that post back a little bit with the test tube, just like that. Okay, that's and that's what I'm going to do. So I don't have to extend this any further. Cool. All right, I'll hide that. So let's take this in front view. Now we'll do it in top view. Let's uh, copy it, Shift D, and bring it in. And I'm just going to do by eye. And I'm looking at the arrow too, seeing as it's roughly pointing to the center. Okay, you could array this if you wanted to, but let's go Alt H. I just want to think about these. If I feel like they're too high still, not particularly. Okay, so what I'll do now is I'm going to take one of these, Shift D, and I'm going to bring it right up into the middle there so I can see. And then I'm going to bring it down under here. And it's going to go roughly there. And then now I'm going to simply scale shift Z and make it wider. Now you could do a fancy design on it if you wanted to, and it would probably look a little bit better. Um, my 3D cursor is still in the middle of this, so I'm going to mirror this to the other side. Mirror with respect to this. And I'm going to have that. I'm going to hit apply, and I'm satisfied with that. And that is the test tube stand right there. Not too much to it. All right, we could copy another one of these. Uh, this is still on the second layer. 
So, oh, they're all on the second layer. Let's let's uh, select that first layer too and go Shift D. Let's bring another one down here. Let's do one more, but I'm not going to keep them all upside down. What I'm going to do instead is I'm going to take uh, maybe I'll take two of them and do that. Maybe I'll get rid of that one and even that one. You know, polys go up pretty good. Um, <clears throat> uh, I'm going to take all this stuff and move it to the first layer. And I'll select that stuff as well. All right, well, let's see if we can have a look through the camera and hit the home button. All right. Um, lock camera to view. There we go, like that. Um, let's take this light and let's make this a hemi I think use nodes I'll go five rotate in the X let's see come on all right something something like that uh, let's just have a quick look at this all right so now okay um, really that's it for the model but I'll do a little bit more just to make it look a little nicer